Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today I'm here with another incredible guest, Owen Thompson. What's good? I go to Laurentian Bilingual School. It's a lot more like high school than I thought it was. Yeah, I talk a lot of trash about business yeah. on this podcast. Yeah. A whole lot. Yep. I dig into Rotman students. <laughs> Rotman is the, the business U of T program. The GM of the Lightning. He was talking about how he actually became a GM. He didn't even want to be in sports. He, he wanted to be a lawyer. And I literally told him, like, I can name you 80% of the contracts in the NHL. And he's like, you're like one of the first people that's ever told me that. If I was here and I was like, I was like Mark Cuban or something. And I wanted to give you $2 million, you start your own business and then you can work for yourself there. 100%. What kind of business would you start? It's an incredible question. I do have an answer. I feel like most jobs nowadays are pretty useless. I've narrowed down what I think are the three most important occupations to humanity. What do you think about Valentine's Day? I fucking hate Valentine's Day. That's a lie. I had a presentation on the horrible things that happened during the World Cup. Oh, I shout out HP team again. What did you do? Uh, I worked as maintenance, so I just uh, cleaned pools. The amount of people that shit in pools is... <laughs> crazy i actually do really enjoy and appreciate working in the construction industry would you even consider branching away from the university side of things and i'm gonna have to i had a logo for voices of vic before the actual logo look at that shit. bro that color scheme look how ugly that is Dude. when you get to u of t everyone there is already smart so if your only skill if your only positive trait is that intelligence then you have nothing Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Voices of Vic podcast, VOV podcast, that is Voices of Vic. Today I'm here with another incredible guest, Owen Thompson. What's good? Brother of Colin Thompson. Worst episode of all of them. He's calling the worst episode. He <laughs> claims that this is going to be the most viewed, same was, as his brother. That was a secret off camera, bro. Okay. You just, you shut, what the heck, man? You didn't want to blast it like Colin did. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. You go to Laurentian? I go to Laurentian Bilingual School. Yep. Yep. I learned that yesterday. Damn. Research. Not going to lie. Yeah. I did do research. You know, I get to know my guests. Yeah, Not that enough. we haven't known each other for like 15 yeah, plus years. Yeah, we live beside each other. But exactly. Sure. Um, what can you say about Laurentian? How's your first year been? Um, my first year was up and down. Oh, I might be talking too loudly. Uh, my first year was a little rocky. It was a little weird. Um, but honestly... It's a lot uh, more like high school than I thought it was. That's what. That's literally what Colin it's said. It's the weirdest thing to me. Um, Four-hour drive up there. Um, you got to meet a bunch of people. I lived on res, like I assume most people did. Um, yeah, it was just weird. And the thing is, though, is like, so you know me from French school and whatever like that. I don't even use French there. It's a bilingual school. It's a bilingual school. school. So, when, okay. When they call themselves a bilingual school, does that mean that there's an English section and a French section or is it mixed? Is it like you can do, it's like both at the same time. So it's like, it's both of those points. So it's, there's an English section, which is, um, I don't even know what it's called. SGA, I think, or something. I don't know, whatever. And then there is a French section inside the school that I, it's just like a hangout spot, but, uh, but you can do both. And I learned last year that you actually have to take like one French class every semester to actually graduate bilingually. Got it. But uh, I didn't do that because I suck at French. So okay. even even being fluent in it. Yeah. But I, I, I suck in French. So I That's just decided, fuck that. I'm doing, uh, I'm going English. That's fair. That shit. And you're studying the same thing as Colin or something different as Colin? It's close. So it's sports it's, business. It, it's technically, it is sports business. It's called sports administration. Okay. Um, I get called spad kid. Okay. <laughs> it's close enough to sped. Yeah. Um, that's what Laurentian is known for. That's it's business is what Laurentian is known for. Business or sports business particularly? Um, particularly sports business just because of a certain guy, Kyle Davidson. There you uh, go. Sh Chicago Blackhawks GM for anyone that doesn't know. Um, but it's known. So yeah, it's known for its businessy sports business side. Uh, that's what I take. Um, but it's different from, like you said, from my brother because... It's weird. First of all, the classes are kind of reversed. So classes that I'm taking this year, I compared it to my brother. Yeah. They're actually, his is being taken year three and four, except for like internships and shit like that. So wait, so say that again. You're taking his third and fourth year classes on a or the other way around? On, on a technicality. So I'm taking classes that he would take in third and fourth year. So he's a dumbass. No, but no, no, no. <laughs> that's just how the school's laid it out. He is a dumbass. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. that's just how the school's laid it out. So... Interesting. You'd have to think that they would line up, the material would line up where 
you have to learn this in this order, yeah. but that doesn't apply. Yeah, so like, what are those, what are the courses? So I think from what Colin told me, his classes were a lot more like uh, marketing and yeah. uh, accounting stuff like that. I did. I don't even know. Um, my classes this year were like economics, which is, I think, which is what you do. That's what I take. And, um, what else did I do? I did accounting, but it was like learning about sports and stuff like that, which is, I also think is one of his classes, but yeah, like marketing and, uh, stuff like that. He's taking like, he took last year marketing. I think I'm not taking that till year three. Interesting. Which is like, I don't, I don't know how that makes sense, but yeah, no, it doesn't. It works. I guess it doesn't line up. I'm taking a, so yeah, I am taking economics. We learned micro macro. I'm sure you did yeah, the same did thing first year. year. Um, but I'm also doing a business certificate on the side. I've already expressed my interest in business. Yeah. Business is, that's the thing. I didn't understand going out of high school, what it meant to study business. Yeah. Cause like everything is business. What do you mm. mean study business? Mm-hmm. Like it didn't, it didn't really make sense to me. I thought that you would study a particular area, a particular mm-hmm. Maybe like a skill, actually earn a skill. Yep. No offense, business is like a pretty broad <laughs> skill though. Or like specialize like you, sports, business yeah. particularly. But business is just so broad. So I didn't really understand you could just kind of go to school to learn the fundamentals of the whole thing. Yeah. Anyways, the business courses I am in are very good. I took accounting, marketing, uh, principles of management, which was like the the main basic yeah, one. Yeah. And then this year I'm taking finance 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 sorry actually no i took finance last year i'm taking marketing this year doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah i talk a lot of trash about business yeah on this podcast yeah. a whole lot yeah. i dig into rotman students <laughs> rotman is the the business U of T program i just tear these guys apart but i want to clarify is that it comes from a place of love yeah it really comes Definitely. from a it's place like a, of love. yeah okay in a place yeah. of admiration sure you know what i mean because <laughs> like the best way i could think of it is when you're insulting your friend, when you're making fun of your homie, you don't call, or at least for the most part, you don't call your fat friend fat. <laughs> all right. You call your guy, your friend who's in amazing shape, but he's having an off yeah. day. You call him fat. Yeah, I you call, call him Troy fat. fat all the time. Right, he's in amazing shape. He's in great shape. <laughs> so you don't actually, it it's, gets a little too personal when you start saying real mean insults yeah. to people, right? Yeah. So for business, I talk trash to them so hard about they're they're not studying anything real. Yep. It's not a real program. You're going to graduate for no reason. But it's it's because I think that there are more lost souls in arts and science, which is what I'm doing. Mm. I think that if you wanted to get real, I think that there are more people who went into university and just they picked something random because they didn't know what else yeah, to do. They, yeah than in arts and science than there are in business. I think the students in business, sports business, they went in, they know they want to do this. I want to do that. I want to work in sports. They know. They have a bit of certainty, right? Well, for the most part, anyway. For my class, except for like one student who she she's taking sports business, but she's actually like a website designer. And that's what she's trying. So I guess, because sports business, as much as it is about the sports side, it's also the business degree. And like that's the main idea although going back to your point of i didn't know i didn't even like you didn't like appreciate how much you have to learn about the business side instead of just like the basics and stuff right when i first looked at the laurentian um sports administration like course i was sitting here thinking oh we're just gonna like watch a bunch of sports and talk about money and well nope not even close yeah. Not not even close. Literally, I had a sports business class. It's called sports business in yeah. one because I had it second semester too, yeah. and it was presentations of, um, if you had to put uh, a team in the WNBA, where would you put them, and and how would the arena work, and how would the money work, and all that stuff, and why would we pick your team over someone else's team? It's got it. It's a bunch of stuff like that that I didn't even know was a thing. Like, who's I your favorite know. WNBA player? Who's my favorite WNBA player? Who's the girl that like got arrested in Russia or something because <laughs> of uh because yeah. she brought the weed in or whatever? <laughs> I don't know her name. I forget her name. Good pick. Good pick. <laughs> I think that's mine. That's a good pick. Um, but no, that's interesting too. And when you graduate, like, in your opinion, I don't know. I'm just I'm asking you. Mm. 
do you think that people are going to look at your degree as lesser than a, just a straight business degree? Or do you think it's going to be a bonus? Like, so there's just a plain business degree and you decided to go a step further, make it sports business. Do yeah. you think that's going to help you or hurt you in the long run? In terms of, well, cause what I want to do is GM is like where I want to be. That's it's not Colin like Colin where he's like, Oh, that's like a goal of mine. But I want, <laughs> I, I just want to be in a sport. No, 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 no. I'm a job going for GM. I yeah. don't care if I have to beat Colin. I'll be Colin. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. I like the grind. I like the hustle. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's not really a advantage in terms of whether you're just taking a business degree or a sports business degree, except for like, like I don't even, I don't really know, but I will say a story. So, I went to Montreal last year um, for my school, and uh, it was just a bunch of conferences about or with higher ups and a bunch of sports teams. And one of them was um, the GM of the Lightning. Yep. I don't know what is his. I forget his name. What is his name? Ah, uh, starts with a J. I literally met with the guy. Starts with a J. Julian. Jul- it's not Julian Brisbois. Is yeah. it? Is yes. it Julian, Julian Brisbois? Brisbois? Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, and he was talking about how he actually became a GM. Yeah. He didn't even want to be in sports. That's interesting. He he wanted to be a lawyer. He's a good GM. He's too. a really good GM. Yeah. But he didn't want he didn't want to be in hockey. He didn't want to be he wanted to be a friggin' lawyer. Yeah. And then he knows this guy in Montreal. I, I was it Steve Eiserman? It might have been Steve I, I he said something about Steve Eiserman, I'm not sure, but um he got hired as like a salary cap arbitrator, because lawyer arbitrator, that's yep. kind of how it works. And then he got promoted to assistant GM right away. And then he Look goes to Tampa. Look at that. I'm taking freaking. I'm doing what I have to do, like to get there. And he's being a freaking lawyer. Yeah, I'm not that smart. I'm not going to Harvard Law. There's there's so many different paths you can take to whatever. Like even like NHL GM, sure, but any yeah. destination you want. No, but it worries me though. It, it worries me that there's so many paths because there are so many paths. But you're taking the obvious one. I'm taking the obvious one, but at the same time, the amount of people that are like um, in that business yeah. from just being a retired player is scary that's true there's so many coaches gms yep. assistant gms that are only retired players 100 and like i feel like that kind of lowers my chances of actually getting there but kyle yeah. dubas yep. did it and kyle davidson did it so yep hopefully 100 that's hopefully. A, that's a good point yeah it's competitive it is very competitive um yeah look at montreal's gm he was yeah. a player agent mm-hmm. that's now what kyle dubas was he was a player agent there you go general manager like, now there's so many different ways to get there and yeah it's it is kind of scary to think that you're taking the path, like the most direct path, I would say. Yeah. Studying to be a GM, literally. Pretty much. Pretty much. At least to be like a a guy with uh, a guy that's going into salary, which is actually weird because so business, right? You'd think that's all about money and stuff, right? Right, right. right. So um, in April, I went up to. We have this class called Colloquia, which Colloquia. is which is literally you just sit there for three hours and you talk about your goals and you ask questions and there's presentations and stuff Interesting. and at the end of the year my uh the teacher for that class wanted interviews with everybody so i obviously go and he's like um i don't know how the conversation came up but he was asking me about what i want to do interviews for what uh just like uh end of year interviews like uh, um what do you want for your future here at this school and okay, and okay. and um what are your what does he use what are your goals and stuff like that sure sure and he asked me, like, um, what are your interests about sports business? Like, what are you actually interested in doing? What path are you actually interested in taking? Yep. And I literally told him, like, I can name you 80% of the contracts in the NHL. I'm like, yeah. I love the money side. I can name you anything about money in the NHL. I will know everything. Yeah. And he's like, you're like one of the first people that's ever told me that. Interesting. And I was like, how am I the one of the first ones? Yeah. This is literally a business course. Yeah. But apparently it's more just scouting and stuff like that that other people want to do or player agents. Interesting. So, but what are they teaching you? Are they teaching you the money part or are they teaching you the scouting? They're teaching us, uh, they they taught us more this year um, on, what did they teach us this year? We did a little bit of money uh, kind of predicting how much the cap will go up and stuff like that or what's a good contract to have at a certain amount of time. COVID really fucked things up though. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was, it was really weird, but yeah, it was more, I, what did I do? I did accounting, which helped me out a lot, even though I literally read like an accounting sheet the other day and I had no idea what I was doing. (laughs) 
it was for like parking tickets or something. Or okay. something bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, marketing I have to do, which is going to help me a lot. But yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't too much with salaries this year, which sucks. Cause that's yeah. what I thought it would be. It right. was more just, um, like math. Got it. Math and presentations. That's really all it was. Do you have a plan B? Do I have a plan B? Ooh, I have a lot of plan B's a lot. Like, like just a lot of, not really like a specifically, specifically one that would, that I would actually do just like a bunch of thoughts, like police officer, or yeah. start your own business, which I know you'd want to do, which for I actually sure. have a question for that after, but, okay. um, yeah, police officer is probably the main one that I would do. I'd yeah. love, I'd watch a bunch of cop shows and shit. So yeah. like get, get on the ground. 100%. You know? Yeah. I think that it's, it's, it's a tricky game trying to come up with a plan B because yeah, plan B kind of lets you let back a bit, mm-hmm. I feel. But at the same time, you don't want to show you like, it's weird. Cause like if I went up to someone and said, Oh, this was my plan B. I wouldn't want to show that that's more that like, like I wouldn't want to show that I'm like submissive to that idea. Yeah. Like I don't want to, like I want to pursue plan A. Yeah. Plan like, B is just like, if I have to do it, but that's right. And even, even thinking it, of it as a possibility mm-hmm. lowers your chances of plan yeah, a Yeah, literally if you only have plan a and you say if i fail this then my life's over well that's not like no i know i know <laughs> but if you if you hype it up right if you hype it up as much as possible you make you you increase the fear of not you achieving do. that. yeah so it, it is going to increase your odds it's, yeah it, it's it's a weird thing to think about yeah you, no one really wants to do plan b 100%. but like you have to have one 100 percent. i was thinking about it the other day I obviously want to start my own business. I want to be an entrepreneur. I feel like a lot of people yeah. these days wanted to be entrepreneur, yeah. mainly just because it's never been easier to be an entrepreneur with the internet. But it, it's it's weird because you say that, but like the amount of the amount of Instagram ads that I get yeah. about starting your own business, yeah, it's like bad. Okay, like it's like there's, <laughs> but at the same time, there's probably like no one clicking on like the links or whatever, right? Or anything like that. Anyway, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, if I had to talking about Plan B. I was thinking, what would I do if I just had to get a job? Like if I was, if I did pick my ideal job, I could not work for myself. What mm-hmm. would I want to be? And I think that I'd want to be a firefighter. Firefighter. You said, you said police a officer. Police officer. Yeah. Cause I watch way too many cop shows. Right. And the, pol- the reason I say firefighter over police officer is because I think, I feel like a police officer would be a good job if you completely trusted the government for which you were working for. Okay. Because as a police officer, there's no... You can't inflict any of your own personal will no, or can't. beliefs. No. That's that's wrong. Yeah. And it should be that way. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't a police officer shouldn't step in and think this is the law, but I'm going to work it the way I see it. Yeah, you can't it's not your opinion. Exactly. You have to follow the book the way the book's written. Yeah. So, if you that's the thing though, if you don't trust the laws that are being implemented by your government, then a police officer is a very scary job to oh, have because yeah, sure. you're going to have to start doing things and enforcing laws that you don't even believe in yeah which could be a tough position to be in oh yeah for sure um but I, yeah i had so, a question though yeah because so you say you want to start a business right yeah i think my brother tried to ask you this but it didn't really come out okay so you want to make two million a month that's what i heard something like that that's like your goal or whatever that is the goal that is your goal i was a little bit more soft spoken about it on the podcast because yeah, it sounds crazy it does but, but once it's possible. again we're not saying there's plan yeah. b my my goal it would be incredible i have many goals yeah i'm not just looking to be money if i have money and i'm obese (laughs) it's not worth it no if i have money and i have no kids it's not worth it i have plenty of other life goals for sure for sure but financially that's a dream so if i came to you today and said that i will give you i had like money for you to start a business or whatever What do you, what type of business are you coming to me with? What is your dream type of business that you actually want to start? Unless it's the podcast, which then fair enough. But if, if you had, if I was here and I was like, I was like Mark Cuban or something and I wanted to give you $2 million, you start your own business and then you can work for yourself there. 100%. What kind of business would you start? It's an incredible question. And I have not spent enough time thinking about that, but I do have an answer. It'd have to be something around AI. Yeah. Because AI is right. We're right on that cutting edge where it's not been too deeply dived into. Mm. There aren't many businesses right now surrounding AI, even though it is the hugest leading innovative technology that exists. For sure. And ChatGPT. 
chat GPT and just plenty of other, you see the art AI yeah. that's going on, all this type of stuff. So the business would definitely have to involve that because, because that's brand new. There's not much, cause like a lot of the time you heard about Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin's yeah. been around for a while. Yeah, it's been around for forever. And then COVID happened and it just completely exploded. It boomed. It was through the roof. Yeah. And, and all the people are thinking, I wish I acted on Bitcoin in 2016 when I heard about it. Yeah. AI right now is in that position where there's rumblings. People kind of know about it. They've cha- they've used ChatGPT once or twice, but they don't take it too seriously. I think that's going to be the next huge thing. Oh, it, it's it has it to ha- be. it's already becoming a huge thing. It's already becoming a huge like thing. the amount of people the amount of people that use it yeah. right now that I know of. Like my teachers at school, they already have a way to figure out if you use ChatGPT on your papers and shit. Hopefully my teachers don't have that. Yeah, hopefully my <laughs> teachers don't have that. Either. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, it definitely would be be involved in that because there are a bunch of there still are even though once again at our age it feels like everyone's using ai because mm-hmm. we're we're the next uh our generation is the next up but hopefully a lot of the the older generations there's a lot of businesses still run by a lot of old guys who don't really know anything yeah, about it nothing so yeah if you came to me with a bunch of money i would spend that money and i'd spend my time investigating ai so I thought I fixed the cameras. Did you? Overheated. Damn. Um, yeah, I told you. No worries. Like, like do better. Yeah, we gotta figure it out. Here the fuck up. Put like a. Ref- I'll put a little fan on top of it. That could probably work. Maybe I can invent a. That'll be my business. That's your business idea. Camera fridge idea. <laughs> Camera fan makes sure it overheat. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, what, what were we talking about? Oh, the best job. So I was saying I would want to be a firefighter. Mm. I gave my whole spiel about the police job, which I still respect if you, um, yeah, watch a lot of cop shows. You want to like shoot criminals? Yeah. No, 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 I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, don't want to shoot anybody. <laughs> no, I just want to uh, arrest people. Just arrest people. Yeah. yeah. Um, but firefighter. Yeah. Firefighter. There's just enough action to keep your life interesting. Yeah. Right. Um, you have to keep yourself in shape, which I think in other jobs people might use, People might have an excuse for not being in shape because, you know, they're busy with work, their family. Yeah. We're young. We don't have that much to do so we can stay in shape. But I think if your job was to be a firefighter, your job was to stay in shape, that would be incredible for your life. And actually, oh, yeah, that does. I didn't even think of that. Makes sense. right? That's fair. And the camaraderie too. camaraderie, yeah. just having like uh, a group of, of guys you can always hang around, laugh with. Yeah, that's that's fair. Which a lot of people lose in their lives as they get older, too. Um but I don't think, even though I'd want to be a firefighter, I was having this issue, this dilemma the other day. Um, I feel like most jobs nowadays are pretty useless. Most jobs nowadays are pretty useless. Yeah. Like if you look at the, the people that are making a lot of money, they're not actually like a lot of them are doing pretty useless yeah. things. You know what I mean? Just, just, just an orange roll alone. Just in a, like, yeah, literally. Sure, yeah. Like no, most literally. of these businesses, bro, AI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. AI could just take just over. wipe them out. Honestly. And and even like, if you look at the entertainment industry, it's bigger than it's ever been. Yeah. Movies. A movie doesn't keep someone alive. No. If the world starts to fall apart, no yeah. one's worried about making the movies. Uh, that's fair. Right? I have a great topic. Okay. Okay. Well, not really. Maybe just like a comment. Because you said that like in the movie, in the movie industry... Yeah. No one, no one's going to die if there's no movie. Correct. Right. Are you going to give me an example of how someone's going to die with a movie? No. Without a movie? I'm not going to say that. No. (laughs) I need, I need my movies, bro. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I I saw this on, on, uh, social media the other day. Okay. Yeah. And I think, I think I actually agree with it because I think it's so fucking crazy how like doctors and, and people that actually save lives. So off police officers, firefighters, which is what your plan B is technically, um, doctors, nurses, all this shit, how they make what on average 100, 200, 300 grand a year. Sure. And shit like that. Not Yet as much as the, the movie. Stars. Not as much as that. Not as much as the fucking sports athletes getting 50 million a year. Yep. Entertainment wise. Yep. Like, I think that's the, do- I, I, it's weird because like doctors and nurses don't bring in money. Like you're, you're not going to, watch an hour for an hour like doctors performing something on somebody unless you're like into Grey's Anatomy in that case fair enough right it's it's just it's it's crazy to me 
in the, yeah in the grand scheme of like when you really step back and just look and compare side by side the work that these two people are doing the doctor is far more important yeah. than lebron lebron <laughs> the doctor is far more important than mitch marner okay well, that's fair. Sorry, Mitch Marner. Sorry, Mitch. You know he blocked me on Instagram? What? <laughs> yeah. Mitch Marner blocked you? Mitch Marner blocked me. For when what? He was, when he wasn't signed, I would DM him from time to time. Be like, bro, come on. Now's the time. Stop holding out. Blocked my ass. Blocked your ass. I think he, I'm sure that there was a lot of people who have the same thing. But oh, probably. Yeah, literally. Did you do the same with Matthews? I don't know he resigned, but. No, Matthews is a G. I have to respect him. Half Mexican respect brother. Him. That's fair. Um. No, anyways, <laughs> blocked him. so, so the Mitch Marner is not as important as the doctor, but even though in the grand scheme of things, yes, it's wrong. It, it just comes down to scarcity and it comes down to how money works. Yeah. Like it, that's there. I don't think there's any way to really stop it. Like it's not fair, but it's, it is what it is it, Yeah, it's, because there are more people and this is, this might sound insane. Like words, word for word, this might sound insane, but if you really think of the logic, there are more people who can do what that doctor can do than can do what Mitch Marner can yeah, do. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. That's that's also fair. So yeah. Mitch Marner's got a rarer skill that people are willing to show up to the arena for, and even though it's not as important of a skill as the doctor, when the world collapses, you're going to need that doctor more yep. than you're going to need Mitch. Yep. But it's that's just how money works, and I don't think there's any way you should you know try to change it. You can't really change it. You can't, you know. Um. But in terms of most important jobs, because I was having, this is a, a problem. My brain's always working. Yeah. My brain's always on. Even in my sleep, I'm trying to figure out life. <laughs> trying to work things out all the time. But this my fucking depressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my brain's always running. I'm try, I always try to solve problems I have in my mind. Yeah. I've had one for months. I did have one for months. It was a long problem. I've had it. Since like maybe like the end of the school year, I just solved it the other day. Okay. Of important work, because I'm I'm trying to become an entrepreneur, and I don't expect to really do a job that is as important as a doctor. Yeah. Most businessmen aren't doing work as important as doctors are. You know what I mean? Um. But, but I I'd, I'd had to try to rationalize how can I. Because because I want to contribute to humanity. Yeah. I think that. Contributing to humanity is a very selfless way to go about your your work. If you watch, we did an episode with Callan Murphy. He's a Tesla intern. Oh. And he was talking about how if I put one bolt in a ship that lands the first people on Mars, I would consider that a success. So he's fully invested into, into making a contribution toward the progress of mankind. Whatever AI business I come up with, I don't think that it's going to be too revolutionary, right? In terms of actually moving humanity to its next steps. So I was trying to figure out why are there so many useless jobs? Cause there are. Yeah. Mitch Marner's a millionaire, a multimillionaire, Mr. Beast. I love Mr. Beast. Don't get me wrong. His content is great. It's very impressive, but making a squid games is nowhere near as important as the doctor. Yeah. Right. But it still gets paid. He's this, he gets this, this catapult four one five guy that I heard the other, like, he, useless 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 that's the thing this podcast is why this is why i started thinking about it is because i was getting somewhat insecure for spending so much time making these damn episodes <laughs> when if the world collapses, who gives a shit yeah. about a podcast nobody it's useless it is useless it's purely entertainment right yeah. it helps me work on my communication but i mean just the output that i'm creating the reels all this stuff purely entertainment there's not much survival value yeah in it but i think that for the longest period of history, everyone's been standing on the shoulders of giants. Everyone's been reaping the benefits of people who've done work to progress yeah. humanity. I'm sitting in this house. I have not built shit in this house. That fan I did not build. Yeah. This couch I didn't make. Those chairs I use every day I didn't make. Like none of this I made. Yeah. Sure. My parents had the money to to buy the house which is how life works. But I feel like I am benefiting so much from the work of other people, from the work of innovators, people who progressed humanity, yep. right? Who did that selfless work, who put the bolt in the spaceship to now enjoy my amazing life in 2023. Mm -hmm. So how can I sit here and enjoy all the luxuries of modern life and say, nope, I'm going to, 
just make a podcast that's going to be enjoyed for however many years as I decide to make it and then I'm going to die and it's not going to progress anything. You know what I mean? That's fair. So it's very long winded, but I've narrowed down what I think are the three most important occupations. Okay. To humanity. All right. Top three. I want your thoughts. Okay. Number three. I thought you narrowed it down. Already. I did narrow it down. I swear. <laughs> I swear. I was, uh, I was like, yes, no. Number three, I think is computer scientist. Okay. I think a computer engineer. I think that technology is the way of the future, of course. And that's fair. I agree with that. That's and fair. innovation is important. That's fair. With computer science. Number two, I would say are doctors. Because you can't get anywhere number if everyone's dead. Who are doctors? People are dying and you're that. That's number two. That's number two. You can't get anywhere if everyone's dead. Yeah. Fair. Fair. So you need doctors. Extremely important. What's number one? <laughs> number one, I'd say, is engineers. Engineers. I think an engineer is the most important occupation to humanity. Because whatever knowledge the doctor has, he still needs the equipment that the engineer is going to have to learn to make. There are plenty of different types of engineers. Shit. You need a You need a house to live in. You need cars to move on the road. All this is engineering. You need to be able to build stuff. This is yep. why I was talking about building the couch, building the fan, building that chair. You should be a fucking theorist. Thank you, sir. That's what you should be. Already. Fair. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> but you need you need things. You need to make things. Things need to be made. Yeah. So obviously, 100% respect the doctors. You can't get anywhere if everyone's dead. But I think those are the top three. What would you? What I would think you one say? and two are tied. One and two are tied. I think one and two are tied because it's kind of like a little bit of a cycle. Yeah. Because the engineers need to make shit for the doctors, but the doctors need to save people. Keep the engineers alive. Keep the engineers alive. That's a good point. So I think that's a little bit of a rotating thing, but... That's a, that is a good point. That's fair. Um, <laughs> let's talk about why we're not hanging out with Colin today. F*** Colin. Colin's a G, and we were going to hang out, the four of us. Yeah. Me, you, him, Troy. You know, get some Ponce Brothers, Thompson Brothers action. Yep. Mini stick action. 100%. It's been a while. And you decide to simp for your girl. I I don't know what you're talking about. You decide to There's simp no for your girl. Proof. There is proof. There is proof. I have it on the text. That's please enough. Please tell everyone how long fair you've enough. been with her. Please tell everyone how long I've been with her. I've been with her for, uh, what day is it? I've been with her for a month and 15 days. A month and 15 days? I know the exact day. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Not a simp. Not a simp. No. I take it back. Thank you. I was... I'm going to walk off now because uh, you called me. <laughs> <laughs> I was under a different impression. I was under a different impression. Okay, but at the same time, you could argue that it is Colin's fault because he's going to get here at fucking 6 o'clock. That's true. I'm here now. And I've you dedicated are, you myself. You showed up. I dedicated myself. I agree. That's a good point. You should have pulled up when his podcast was being filmed. I had no idea. I didn't that know would he have been was a doing war. it. I had no idea he was doing it. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> bro. I was on Instagram the other day. I swear, yeah. I was on the Insta- I was on Instagram the other day. I started scrolling through and I see um, your cousin Alex. I yeah. see her podcast and she's talking about hockey and stuff. I'm like, well, shit. Like, the, like it's it's kind of cool actually. So I started listening to it. Yeah. I scrolled down one fucking video. Colin Thompson. <laughs> when the fuck did he do a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You guys. Do you guys even talk to each other? I was texting both of you at the same time, trying to organize when who was gonna be here. You guys could have just told each other, yeah. This is when. No, because he comes into my room and he's like, I, "I'm like, yo, buddy, I saw your podcast. That was hilarious." He's like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "I texted Carter. I'm gonna go on." And he, and Colin's like, "I'll text him for you." And then he goes back to his room. <laughs> so, how is that dynamic with a twin brother? It's different. Most people. Don't have that experience. Me and Troy obviously are brothers. Twins is, is a very unique Thank setup. You. How's the dynamic? How's your relationship compared to like the brothers you normally know that aren't twins? Um, I honestly think it's a little pretty much the same. Actually, first of all, who's older? 47 seconds. 47 seconds. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same? Yeah, it's 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 pretty much the same unless you're like those um telepathic twins that can read each other's minds sure, sure. Shit. although i remember in like fourth grade we were doing something on like samuel de champlain okay and it was this game with mr zeni i don't know if you remember him oh, shut up mr zeni g mr. Zeni, g big time He's definitely not fucking watching <laughs> <laughs> um we were doing some game where you had to guess so colin would say a word and then i'd have to guess the actual word so he'd say like a hint okay. I, it, like the, the 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 bejeweled game or whatever the fuck it's called anyway sure um and we got like a bunch of them right 
in a row and shit. And then Mr. Zenny was like, you guys are like, telepathic. telepathic and shit. Okay. But it's not. It's it's pretty much the same. Our, our relationship is great now. It was absolute dog ass when we were younger. Cause, uh, young brothers. Young brothers. They're, they're going to fight. You would know. They're going to fight, yeah. yeah. Kick the, those kick the can games were pretty rough. Like, for sure. For um, sure. Yeah, it's it's not much different. Um, we literally, like, when I go to school, we, like, barely talk. Okay. Because he's got a bunch of shit going on, and I have a bunch of shit going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you, you're also very far apart. Yeah. Like way on the hours. north, and he's way on the south. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, he's closer to my work than he is my actual school. Right. So. That's true. Yeah, me and Troy, we don't text a whole lot when I'm in Toronto. Probably should a little more. Yeah, it's, it's kind of depressing, that. guys. Like, damn. Yeah. It's important to keep that in touch. We got to be better. Yeah. I agree. Do you share any of the same friends? Like, is your group, I mean, it's hard no. in different schools. No. Right? Um, not really. It's been like that for a while because yeah. uh, he has the lacrosse thing. I have the baseball thing in the right. summer. Although I'm playing lacrosse this year at You're playing university. Lacrosse. Should have dived into that. Yeah, we can. Explain that. How'd you get into that? My buddy at work. Um, so first day. What's, first, the, what's the team name? Laurentian what? Laurentian Voyagers. 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 That name is ass. That's the, very, <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> like you guys got to do something better. Voyagers. Uh, okay. It's, it's, it's God awful. Um, but yeah, I was uh, showing up to Highland Pines. Shout out HP team. I'm going to send this video to every, to all of them. Like Respect. the whole, the whole group. There's Respect. like 10 of them. You might get 10 extra views. Good shit. Um, like and follow. Like and subscribe. Like dumbass. and subscribe. Sorry. Um, yeah, I went to work on the first day at Highland Pines. It's a campground in Fergus. And I have my Laurentian hoodie on. And I sit across from a guy named Logan okay. in orientation. And he, we were just talking because he's like, yo, do you go to lunch? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what program? Sports administration. And he's like, the same thing. He's just a year older than I am, but okay. the same program. Yep. And I had no idea of the guy. And uh, then he just texts me in the summer says, hey, you want to play lacrosse this year for Laurentian? Sure. Let's hop on the team. Let's hop on the team. There's Our one team, is, team yeah? yeah? Yeah, there's one team. I don't even know if there's a women's team. Is it field or box? Field. field. It's field. Uh, we haven't won in four years. Okay. Uh, we're dog shit. How long has the team been around? Uh, Four years? A while, no, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, you know Ty, Coach Ty, Collins coach or whatever? Oh, yeah. Ty Mikulik or yeah, whatever yeah, the sure. his name is. He's the best player ever to play at Laurentian. Really? Yeah. Respect. He's the best. He's a defender. Respect. Good stuff. <laughs> Not even, like, he doesn't even score. Awesome. It's horrible. He was a G. Um, did you ever want to play junior? Why didn't you play junior? Oh, I, I regret not playing junior. Yeah. And fucking watching Alex's podcast, like, made me like kind of regret not playing yeah and like a bunch of shit, well not just not just that podcast but like i've been thinking about this for like last like two years yeah. like how i wish i took hockey or lacrosse or baseball more seriously yeah and i low-key kind of regret not playing a year in junior are you sure you were good junior. enough junior c yeah yeah junior c i think i could have made like mount forest or you something. seem you seem dust uh, no nah, i'm <laughs> buddy <laughs> yeah you skate like a fucking brick i don't know what to tell you that's fair <laughs> that's what i remember from that's fair um, better than nick though because he crashes into nets respect yeah yeah he uh, does crash in it. i forgot about that yeah gotta send him this it was a girl on the other side of the net too so we started chirping him about it there you go um yeah i regret not playing junior c for I, I yeah for a year at least but in sudbury there's only junior a okay and i i might be good but i'm not i'm like i'm doused compared to them for like sure. they're they're fucking insane yeah no need to explain we all believe you yeah <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're refereeing the. I'm refereeing this year. Yeah. Because no, you refereed not, hockey not, too. Yeah, I refereed hockey for a little bit, but I stopped. And then my buddy Aiden, shout out to Aiden Dion, um, he just kind of enticed me to come back. Okay. And I was just like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna ref this year. Nice. So I'm doing that, playing lacrosse, and then I gotta get a job because I have like no money. Yep. That's yep. important. That's also important. Do you need a job? I do. Do you need to be able to provide? I do. You take your girl on dates yeah she's a little expensive that girl very expensive yeah i don't know her but I just in general uh, right although i still haven't bought her flowers and she still like fucking kills me for it you didn't or you did no i still haven't you still haven't i, still, I keep telling her i will and i still haven't <laughs> and she like gets so mad at me for it i'm really sorry <laughs> she That's gets funny. so mad at me no nah, yeah flowers are always good always nice what do you think about valentine's day i didn't like mm, okay I will do the things necessary yeah. for a girl to have a good Valentine's Day. For sure. Right? A week into starting that I started dating Gabby comes up to me straight up. I fucking hate Valentine's Day. We're just going to go on a road trip or something. That's a lie. And I was like, all right. That's a lie. Yeah, because everything... Don't believe her. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you were going to say. Good. Don't believe her. I feel like a lot of girls say that. I'll still and buy then they it. still are low-key expecting yeah, some... I'll, I'll still buy her shit. Cause I'm nice like, flowers. And yeah, yeah. yeah, all that. For if sure. my brother was here, he'd be like, no, f*** that. I'm not buying her shit. <laughs> Colin, <laughs> Colin Colin's is, not going to buy her nothing. I feel like Colin is the least romantic guy ever, but he could still he could still get a Bro, girl. Bro, pulls, though. He does. He that's pulls, what I'm and I'm like, how? He does. Yeah. He's got an army haircut, for <laughs> fuck's sakes. Like, how does he pull? But he's, I don't think he does that with his, his romance. No. I don't think girls are attracted to his romance. He's just such a... He's just such a funny guy. He's, he's such a cool yeah, he's guy hilarious. too. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. He's like he's an athlete, obviously. Um, but I could not see him being romantic at all. No. I could see him get into a fight with his girlfriend on <laughs> Valentine's Day for like not even remembering or something. <laughs> but no, Valentine's Day is definitely like a, I think it's a girlfriend's holiday. Oh, for sure. Well, sexist. There's no boyfriend's holiday. Say that again. There's no boyfriend's holiday. No, I, mean, I, I don't care. I don't care either. I don't care. Yeah. Birthday. Yep. good enough. Fair enough. Christmas is the best holiday. Christmas is the greatest holiday. For sure. Spending it with family. Oh, yeah, buddy. Do you, do you travel? Do I travel? On Christmas? No. I don't know. No. Who, who's doing that? I, I, I don't think anybody should be doing that. No. Unless you like... Why are you going to a hot place yeah. on Christmas? Well, that's, that's what, what we've Christmas done. I, I went to Florida one year for Christmas. How was it? It was great. What? It was fantastic, actually. <laughs> I thought you said you're not going to... Okay. <laughs> it was really good. It was okay, like... So nah, this, is like this, this is like seven, eight years ago. And we, uh, went, on, we went on like a cruise in Florida. Respect. And uh, yeah, our elf on the shelf came with us. Shout out to the elf out. on the shelf. What, what was his name? Eddie? What was your name? I think mine... I had one. It was Will. I freaked oh. out on elf on the shelf <laughs> one year. So did I. Because I thought like I was completely convinced. I was a weird kid. Yeah. I was completely convinced because I was pretty, I was pretty <laughs> logical. I was pretty rational, yeah. but I still had that like childlike wonder yeah. in my head. <laughs> so I was convinced that the only way this thing could possibly move in the night is that the, the company that owned elf on the shelf put cameras in the elf and they were remote controlling it. Back, you know what? That's fair. So that creeped That's me fair. out. I was like, I was, I was trying to get my mom. I was like, please, they, the only way it can be moving around. <laughs> I, there's cu- there's cameras in here. I don't want it stalking on our yeah. family. Obviously, it's not real. <laughs> Tiny <laughs> kids watching this. Sorry, Sorry to the kids. Sorry. There's a really funny story about Colin, though. We were in... Uh, I don't remember if it was 7th grade or 8th grade. I don't remember if you were in the class or not. We, were in, we were in English class. Okay. With Ragavan? With... Uh, yeah, Madame Oregano. Don't shut that her out. Don't shut her out. Um... And Colin stood up to like do like a little presentation or something, <laughs> and he was doing his presentation on if uh, on how he doesn't believe Santa's real. Okay. <laughs> and there right. was like five kids in the class that still believed. Yeah. So everyone else was yelling at him to stop fucking talking. Men still went on. <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> I completely believe that. I yeah. can see him do that. Yeah. Why Santa isn't real? That is Jokes. funny. Presentations and. Elementary school. I have so many presentations now. It's you, so bad. Oh, in university? Yeah. I, I don't, so I don't know if now. I've had one. Buddy, I have a whole ass suit for it. A what now? A suit. You wear a suit? Yeah. Like a black, black, <laughs> black jacket, <laughs> black Tuxedo. pants. <laughs> Fuck. The whole thing. I have to. That's crazy. It's bad. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've done a single presentation I had, in all of university. I had a presentation on the horrible things that happened during the World Cup. Or the build the the build up to the World Cup. I don't know if you ever heard anything about it. Which World Cup? The most the most one. recent one. Yeah, the Qatar one. What about like the the pride rights? Not, or about the, not the just beer? that. Like that was that was one of them. What about the beer? No, I didn't. We didn't. Did we do anything on beer? There was a whole lot of issues with that. There might have been, but it was mainly just on like how it t- it literally took them ten years to build that whole city. Say what now? It took them 10 years. 10 years to build the city of what? The entire... Of, what was it called? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever city Lusay, they played in? Lusai. Okay. Um, it took them 10... Oh, to get ready for the World Cup? Yeah. They built the city in Damn. 10... They built the city in 10 years. Damn. That doesn't happen. It's My dad cool. works in construction. That doesn't fucking happen. So what's the takeaway? Um, they had... There was a bunch of killings. Um, there was a bunch of uh, problems with like medical and shit like that because they weren't taking care of the... Uh, the people that were working for them Got it. and shit. And um, there's actually a funny story about that. Um, I was at, So I was presenting that yeah. in class with a bunch of people. And we were talking about just all the people affected. 
so we were talking about uh, all the residents, and then uh, I was getting on to like the LGBTQ plus community, yep. right? Because they were affected because of that whole there, there was like the whole there was a whole reporter that like died or something because of, of anyway. And um, as I was saying, how affected the LGBTQ plus community was, yep. I actually uh, ended up saying the homophobic community. <laughs> Which is the which is the, the opposite, exact opposite the exact opposite of LGBT. And there was a girl in my group who was a lesbian. <laughs> Luckily, she didn't notice I said it, and I didn't even realize I said it in the presentation. In the present, I had no idea I said it in your suit. <laughs> yeah, in my whole suit and everything. We go to economics class after, and everyone comes up to me, and I'm like, "Why is everyone like around me right now?" So close. <laughs> and they're like, "Dude, you know you said homophobic community during your presentation, right?" And I was like. First four letters you got, yeah, uh, kind of trickled <laughs> off after that. It was bad. My nerves went away completely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was. Uh, it was horrible. That's quite. Yeah, you couldn't get any further from what you were supposed yeah, to say. I couldn't. <laughs> it was bad. That's all right. Um, what are you expecting from this second year of university? I'm expecting it to be better. I'm expecting like not better. In, in what way? Of, in what way? Uh, just in like a mental way. Okay. Um, because first year. Um, my dad said this and I kind of agree with him. It's kind of the year for the school to get rid of the people that don't want to be there, that aren't yeah. going to be there in the long term or whatever. 100%. I had a roommate who was taking zoology and he wanted to start a business. Nice. <laughs> he dropped everything. <laughs> nice switch up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> zoology. Zoology. I don't know. And, uh, but yeah, I expect it to be a lot better mentally because I struggled last year just with being far away and the workload and shit. Because, bro, I, I sucked as a high school student. I was horrible. And, like, you can't get by by just, you know, studying last minute and doing shit last minute. Like, you got to, yep. like, study, like, every day throughout. pretty much. Yeah. Like, throughout. Um, but I'm playing lacrosse. I'm going to ref, get a job, maybe drink a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, I, I expect it to be a lot better mentally. Just, like, the social aspect, you mean? Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And then the workload's probably just going to get harder. What have you done this summer? We barely, work. we barely talk. Buddy, I've worked this summer. Just worked this summer. That's yeah. all I've done. I've, I've worked this summer. I went on vacation for a week or two. I went to Boots and Hearts. Nice. So did Troy. Yeah? Yeah. What day? Troy and Alex. What day? I don't know. Sunday. I went to see Nickelback. Nice. It was great. Was it? Yeah. A lot of people shit on Nickelback. Fuck I don't know people. why. Why the fuck do you shit on Nickelback? They're it's so good. pretty good. Although their music sounds the same every song. Look at this like, photograph. Every time I do it makes. That's a first. Sing it on your podcast. Good song. That's a first. Good song. Yeah, singing on. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> just turned to a singing show. Honestly, um, but no, that's good. Yeah, so just worked all summer. Where'd you work? Highland Pines. Say what now? Highland Pines. Highland Pines. Oh, shout out HP team again. What'd you do? Uh, I worked as maintenance, so I just uh, cleaned pools. Okay. Um, which the amount of people that shit in pools is <laughs> crazy, <laughs> what? bro. What? <laughs> it's <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> people, people like grown we'll people, have, or you be um, like babies? You don't know where it comes I don't, from. I don't think it's. I don't think it's babies. These are bro, some pretty shit, big pieces. It's, it's bad. <laughs> like, bro, we have the doors locked and shit at night. We wake up in the morning. We go to like our biggest pool. There's just shit in the pool for it's no like, reason. You sure it's not an animal? Could be. Could be. But it's probably big. not. Like it's like it's like decent sized. It's like a human. Okay. It's like a human size. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds like a fun job. Yeah. Didn't get yelled at this year. It's good. Yeah. Except by your parents. No. Not I was either. I was barely home. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. What'd, What'd you do all summer? Same work. Where'd you already work? Orangeville precast. What? <laughs> Orangeville precast. I sell rocks. You I sell, sell rocks. I sell concrete. Okay, Colin. Septic tanks. Shit. Ew, septic tanks. I work with those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. <laughs> you know septic tanks. Um, but they're brand new. Oh, that's good. So because mine are from like the nineteen fifties and they're god awful. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sure they smelled horrendous. Uh -huh. Horde. Um <laughs> Bricks sell bricks. Yeah. It's a very glamorous okay, job. So you're at home hardware, pretty much. It's a little different, but yeah. kind of the same. Just That's fair. close idea. I have a completely different role, but yeah, I'm done there now. Going back to school. It's a good job. I I actually do really enjoy and appreciate working in the construction industry. Yeah, because I think it gives an incredible perspective on the kind of work that people are doing out there. Yeah. And what are you What are you gonna do then for uh, this year? Are you gonna get a job? No, no, I don't think so. I think I've, I've, if if I'm gonna look to make money, it's gonna be through myself. Yeah, 
Um, well, I heard I you work at Burger King, and apparently that was horrible. Yeah, that was my first job ever. No way. That was my first job ever. Yeah, I was. How old was I? I was right before COVID hit. So. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was like year one or year two. No, 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 no. No, Burger King was was my first job ever when I was I was super young, yeah, November man. 2019. So like yeah, a few months before COVID. Yeah. Um, but that was also yeah that was also like an eye opener. I think these these kinds of jobs like, I think it's good to work with, especially people who are far ahead of you in life, like in age. I mean, yeah, like far yeah. older than you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's different. It's it's it all depends on where you come from, but. I obviously don't want to work at Burger King for my whole yeah, life. No and shit. it gives you perspective because there are people there who will be working there for their whole life. Yep. And you want to do your best to avoid that path. I think you, well, you're doing economics. I think you'll be fine at least. You'll be all right. Like, like you've, you've made businesses are technically you've done your YouTube. You got this. Yeah. Like I, you should be okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily call it a business. I'd still like to get, I, yeah, I don't think I actually have any business experience yet. Business is money coming yeah. in. This has not made money yet. I don't know if I want to expose myself, but it has not made money yet. But um, no, I don't. I don't look to the podcast as being a source of revenue. I don't see it as like my my end goal of what is gonna no. make me rich of what's gonna get me successful. So I, I actually have a I actually have a qu- two questions actually yeah. about the podcast. Yeah. So first, where did you get the name Voices, Voices of Vic? Vic. Where- Incredible incredible name just kind of it's, it's it's pretty catchy it's it is it's just, so who's vic <laughs> uh the school victoria college oh yeah vic yeah uh, Vic okay. queen victoria yeah, yeah, yeah. who's named after okay but yeah, voices of vic, vic right, is not some fair. dude i was no. gonna say like voices of who's vic <laughs> who's vic yeah but that makes more sense because you mainly in, uh, interview uh victoria college students yeah mainly but so say this goes somewhere like sure. say this actually does go somewhere yeah because i know you have this thing where there's actually people that are trying to get on the podcast that don't know you or yep. whatever so say this actually goes somewhere you get a hundred thousand views every video you're starting to consecutively get that awesome are you gonna like branch away would, would you ever would you even consider branching away from the university side of things and actually i'm gonna just, have to and actually just make it like a legit podcast i'm gonna have to because that, that's what i was thinking i'm on a two-year clock right now i can only make a university themed while i'm in university yeah. i can't be some dude who just isn't at u of t yeah. and i'm going to u of t talking to people that's weird yeah so i'm on a yeah i'm on a two-year countdown i very good point i don't talk about it with people too much but i think about it a lot yeah um so yeah, two years right now to work within this brand, this idea of being a university podcast, but hopefully at the end of those two years, it's big enough where people will still listen and it will shift from a university podcast to just a regular podcast yeah. about something else. Mm. Um, but yeah, it has to get big enough. So I'm, I have to stick to this brand for the next two years. Yep. I'm going to talk to a bunch of different students. I'm not just going to talk to Victoria College students. Yeah. That's what it was for the first season, if you want to call it, last year. It was purely Victoria College students, which makes sense. It's called Voices of Vic. Yeah. But I think this year I'm going to just talk to a lot more U of T students in general, um, the whole school, not just that one college, because mm. U of T is like seven colleges, one of them being Vic. Yeah. So I think I'm going to branch out there. I'm going to try to get a professor on. Ooh, I think that'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd be a good episode. That'd be cool and and go from there and see what i can make of it fair enough yeah what did i want to say oh yeah voices of vic the name super catchy um i had an idea in first year i actually wanted to start a podcast yeah so i started this in second year but i wanted to start one in first year and the name i had come up with is addy talks which is dog shit addy talks addy talks the least the least cool name ever because my residence building was Margaret Addison Hall, Addison Addy, oh. Addy Talks. That shit was so bad. Uh-huh. Thank goodness I did not start a podcast then. Yeah. Because that is, that's just horrendous. And then I can also show you, I don't know if I have my phone on me. I'll show you the logo. The logo. You had a logo of it? I had a logo for Voices of Vic before the actual logo. Damn, bro. I'll and you edited you. it yourself. Sorry? You edited it. You yeah. edited it yourself? And it was terrible. I actually didn't come up with the logo myself. No. I did. I made it. Yeah. But it was Kat who said, you should try making the 
the Oa microphone. And I was like, damn. That so that completely changed the game. Yeah, yeah. Look at that shit. Bro, that color scheme. Look how ugly that is. Dude. That's terrible. <laughs> that color scheme though. That is so bad. <laughs> I'll pop it up on the screen for people to just see what might have been. Do you have any sort of ideas for like a, a side hustle? Like do, like you do want to get a job and you're trying to get to that that GM position, but how are you gonna get there? Because like you said, there's a lot of people who are who are lawyers yeah. and ex players that you're competing with. It's very difficult. Yeah. I feel like if you look at Kyle Davidson and you look at Kyle Dubas, I don't think that they just did what they were supposed to do. I don't think that they only did this course, got this grade and passed. I think that they had to do way more, get connections, work with teams. Yeah, that's how how are you gonna stand out? Yeah. Stand out from the crowd. Yeah, it's it's rough because I didn't really appreciate it first year how much <clears throat> you actually have to get out and, and get connections and stuff. So there's a buddy in my school who's the like right now he he has like three different jobs, but one of his jobs is like the, the team merchandise manager of of the Sudbury Wolves. Nice. And he's like nineteen. Nice. Or nineteen or twenty. Um but yeah, like and I was just like, God damn. Like I'm I'm sitting here on my ass doing nothing. Yeah. But um yeah, so Kyle Davidson, I kinda read up on him a little bit and he started in Ottawa. I forget what it was actually called. It had to do with helping um like the uh the social kind of side of a hockey team. It's I don't remember what it was called. And then he was like a video analyst. And then he goes from that to I think he just went from that to GM or assistant GM for Got a really it. long time. Got it. <clears throat> and then Kyle Dubas is so much different because he was with the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds for God knows how long. Because yeah. I think it was his dad that brought him there. And Got then he it. was the GM of that. And then he went from the Marlies up. And there's that. My ideal path, because I'm not going to say it, – it's really hard to predict what is going to happen. Because, like, that can change just from year three internships or year four internships, right? Yep. Like any team could offer me something and it would be different. Um, I would like to get in the salary side of it. I would like to, I know, uh, the assistant GM of the Leafs, Brandon Pridham, he does a lot of the salary cap. Yeah. And I think that I like, I would love to do that. Yeah. Um, but you obviously don't start there. Yeah. And I think that, um, I'd probably, I'm probably just going to have to start with like game day ops or something. Yeah. Like just managing the arena for for who? Again, I'd I'd love the Leafs. Like Orangeville House League? No, no. Like like that's the thing. Where do you start though? You got to start somewhere. Like I, like um, what are your odds of starting with the Leafs? So honestly, the odds are it's weird because for you for for you the odds are probably the not written. Well, yeah, I don't take. They're higher business. than what you think they are. Okay. For yourself, they're a little higher than what you probably expect. Sure. Um, most of the time, whoever you do an internship with, you actually get you there that you, you most of the time sure. there, there is a lot of instances where it's not the case cause they're bad or their attitude's bad or whatever. Yeah. Um, so the most likely outcome for me is that I start with the Sudbury wolves okay. just cause they're in Sudbury. They're there and we're, we sponsor them. Like we sponsor their whole team. Like yeah. we get we get we get home games for ten dollars, and we go every Friday or whatever. Yeah. Um. But yeah, basically, I'm just gonna have to get an internship with a team, even if it's not hockey. Like I'll do I'll do baseball, I'll do basketball, whatever. Um. I just have to get an internship, and then hopefully they sign me on as whatever. There's there's so many different things that I could do. Got it. Because yeah, I'm all about differentiation. Yeah, and it's. U of T really taught me how important that is because, and it will apply, I'll explain U of T, but I'll also say how it could apply for yours, is that when you get to U of T, everyone there is already smart. Mm. That's why yeah. they're all there. Or they're academic, right? So if your only skill, if your only positive trait, really strong trait about yourself is that intelligence, then you have nothing. No. If you're only smart, if you go to U of T, your only skill, your only trait is, yes, I have intelligence, and you pull up, you have nothing because everyone is on that level. Yeah. That's why they're there. So you need to be able to do everything. You need to be able to do as much as possible that other people are not doing. So just for me as an example, anything I could do to differentiate myself 
I go D of T. Okay. Me being smart cancels out. Everyone's smart. I will go to the gym. Gym's always packed. Mm. All right. So these guys, all of them are smart and yeah. all of them are working out. Yeah. So I have to compete with them. How do I compete with them? All right. Join the hockey team. It's a team. Yeah. There's 17 other guys who yeah. play hockey. There's a whole league. Everyone plays hockey. All right. So you have to make yourself as unique as possible. And once you get all those different traits, once you become the guy at U of T who goes to the gym, who plays on the hockey team, who has a podcast, so many different yeah, you're things. The, you're the only podcast in your school, right? At Victoria College. Yeah. So there's like that's like that's there's a good huge. differentiator. That's huge. But once again, there's a lot of important things. Sure, I am the only guy with the podcast. I don't play an instrument. No. So the guy with the instrument has me beat there. I don't know how to play guitar. If we're in a setting where I got to get a girl, he pulls out his little ukulele. <laughs> I'm I'm. F- how am I that's not gonna work a ukulele a ukulele no way start singing riptide or whatever <laughs> I'm gonna lose. a good song <laughs> it is a good song so I'm gonna lose right yeah so there's so no, many but you gotta you things. can you can pull out that flirt of yo I got a podcast like <laughs> I'll get you on it I can be like so how was first year for you? <laughs> I, I'll pull this microphone out just live no cameras so I'm to go on a date <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly start interviewing them on the spot oh Oh my god um i'll pull out the ukulele but yeah. i'll pull out the ukulele you, you do the asking i start interviewing we're a team package all right yeah well uh that's really weird i don't know why you said that <laughs> that's that's really <laughs> sus okay um but i'll circle to you now how can you differentiate in your program because everyone is doing the same yeah. courses if you think that just taking sports business just going to laurentian just getting an 80 in that class the average was 82 Mm. everyone's getting good grades how do you step out of the pack you can't just go in a second year and be the guy who takes these courses has a job i'm sure a lot of people have jobs um play lacrosse there's a unique thing but what else what else do you think you can do to win that race to be the gm well first of all our average grade class is not 82 okay <laughs> all right it's lower, it's a little I'm, lower. Thinking, I'm thinking just, it's a little lower just a, little lower. Just, just a tad just a little bit um shout out to laurentian <laughs> the voyagers um yeah it's everyone has their own path right so it's weird i personally think that me being on the side of refing because i'm gonna ref hockey i personally think that's pretty big good like with for connections yeah for for connections my dad knows the guy from sudbury that refs and well my not to fucking like have an ego my dad's like pretty big in toronto sure. for a construction guy anyway so you have a, a family link there so a little bit yeah but it's he's got good connections the adam the adam guy that um who's going to be my i think he's going to be my boss anyway okay um they're also missing a lot of refs so that's also pretty big so i can move up pretty quickly and get into that hopefully that junior level at some point sure but other than that like i know connections is a really big thing like, I know building connections and talking to people. I just feel like everyone does that. Okay. So, I feel like it's kind of like making, starting a business that there's already a ton of people in. So, like, if you start a business that is pretty much equivalent to Tim Hortons, okay. they're going to go to fucking Tim Hortons. They're, they're, sure. they're going to they're, they're gonna do that. So, like, if, I, if I'm building connections with people, at the same time, it is important to build connections. Yeah. But there's also going to be, like, a lot of competition. And I am socially awkward as fuck. Okay. Like I'm not good at building connections. So I feel like I got to figure out ways to have a reputation in a different way. Got it. So I, I'm still trying to figure that out. I hear what you're saying that you have other skills that you can use to get ahead. Yeah. That other people might not have connections. Making connections is a weak spot for you. So it doesn't make as much sense to try to spend a bunch of time making connections mm. when you can spend time doing this that you're good at, mm. which I do agree with it does make sense um but i still think to to get to that place because even though you do have a unique skill i'm sure there's a few other people who yeah no you're definitely gonna have to do the stuff that you don't want to do like you can't you can't just do something that like that you're good at you can't just something you're good at you got to do the stuff that needs to get done no matter whether you like it or not 100 percent. that's what all the people at the top have done they did shit that they didn't want to do but they had to do it exactly that's what you have to do there's going to be a guy who has that one unique skill that you think is the key to getting you to the top and he has it and he has connections yeah. he knows how to do both yeah so you really need to spread your wings i think it goes back to differentiating mm. so like yeah this 
is a lot. It's hard. It, it is. It's hard. It's not easy, especially like again the Montreal thing, right? Like there was two hundred, three hundred people there yep. that take that 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 probably want to become in the same position as I am. Yep. That are rushing to see Julian Brisbois or whatever the. F- yep. Right. So it's you got to be unique. You got to have something that someone else doesn't have, and it's it's hard, but it's possible. Like if, if I don't doubt myself. Absolutely. I'm not doubting that I'm not I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna be up there one day. Absolutely. That's that's just that's my goal. That's my it's good. plan. It's good. Yeah, you gotta believe in yourself hundred oh, yeah. percent, which sounds like you do. And yeah, you gotta grind. Always. Always. Thanks for coming on. Oh, that was powerful. It's great having you. That was powerful. I, I uh I'm not gonna be like my brother. I, I will say I enjoyed being here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Hundred percent. Do you have any closing thoughts for the podcast? Closing thoughts for the podcast. Um, it's not as nerve wracking as I thought it would be to be here. <laughs> I would say, um, don't take school lightly if you're going to do school, because I've done that and I did that in first year. Yep. And it's not something that you want to do because now I'm in a little bit of a pickle in terms of classes. I got to organize shit a little bit. Yep. So don't take it easy first year. Okay. But at the same time, have some fun. You gotta have fun. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Owen Thompson. Great episode. This might be the longest episode we've ever made. That's great. Almost. What time are we at? One thirteen. We had a few breaks. We had. So we'll see. World record.